This nursery and farm are in Waialua, on the north shore of Oahu. The methods and practices established at Kamana Newe Estate can be used and adapted to create and manage a nursery that will produce healthy cacao seedlings or grafted trees for farm establishment in various cacao producing areas. When planning a nursery, select a site or location that's in a sunny, clear, level area with good drainage and protection from the prevailing wind. If strong winds are an issue in your location, as they very much are here in Hawaii, where there are strong trade winds and breezy winter storms, the delicate leaves of young cacao can easily become tattered and damaged. The site should be an area that's easily accessible for everyday inspection and maintenance, and if possible, close to the fields to be planted to reduce the cost and the complications associated with transporting sensitive seedlings and grafts. Water quality is an especially important consideration for the nursery. This is critical because cacao trees are containerized and can accumulate dissolved solids quickly. Because young cacao is so sensitive to chlorides and total dissolved solids, nursery water levels should be as low as possible. At the very least, below 50 parts per million of chlorides and total dissolved solids below 200 parts per million. If your water is above these levels, the young trees will suffer from marginal scorch and nutrient deficiencies. Select or build a nursery structure to accommodate the number of seedlings or grafted trees you intend to grow for the next six to eight months. The length of time needed depends on the time of year and whether they'd be planted as seedlings or grafted trees. Nursery structures can be purchased as complete kits or constructed from local materials. What's important is that shade covering should reduce light levels inside the nursery by 40 to 50%. This is a 50 by 16 foot, roughly 15 by five meter, greenhouse tunnel covered with 50% shade cloth. To protect from wind and rain, the structure is a steel framed and plastic covered structure where it's possible to comfortably cultivate and graft around 800 trees. Before construction begins, clear and level the site, being sure to remove or correct irregularities such as rocks or low spots to produce a smooth, even surface for your nursery structure. Use gravel or ground cover cloth to cover the floor and at least a one meter perimeter around the location of the structure. This will help keep water from contacting the soil and plants, which can transfer Phytophthora and other fungal blights onto the ceilings. It will also promote a cleaner work area, minimize weed growth within the nursery, and if growing ceilings on the floor instead of benches, will reduce root penetration into the ground. Wayside greenhouse benches foster easy access at a good working height and keep the plants off the ground, which promotes air pruning of the top roots. For planting containers, choose specially designed tree pots or planting bags. For example, bags of 22 by 26 centimeters, or as shown here, eight and a half inch by 10 inch tree pots. An improvement over planting bags are these tree pots with vertical ribs and open bottoms. These features prevent J root, a problematic spiraling of the roots at the bottom as is common in planting bags. The roots here remain straight and the taproot is vertical, air pruned at the bottom. When transplanted, the taproot will re-sprout and grow vertically to firmly anchor the tree and with a well-developed system of lateral roots, the newly planted seedlings are more likely to recover and thrive during the early establishment phase. If possible, use commercial peat-based planting mix because it has good physical properties and is free of weed seeds, pests, and diseases. If commercial potting media is not available, use a mix of topsoil and well-composted organic materials such as rice hulls, cacao shells, or manure. The top soil should be neutral in pH to slightly acidic, and its texture should be friable and well-draining. Before filling pots or bags, the topsoil should be screened to remove rocks and debris and thoroughly mixed with organic matter. Now that we have our structure and materials put together, we're ready to select pods and prepare seeds for planting. <music>